zipper. Nice shot. Mean one, yeah. dog. God damn, they're mean ones right now. Charged at Bucky's. Where are we going next? Fouchon, Louisiana. Alright, this is a wild place. Howdy. What are y'all doing? Not fun stuff. Good night! Woo! Hey, boys! Hop on! Let's go! <laughs> What's up, guy? How are you? Man? I'm Joe. Good to meet you. Reese. What's up, bro? I'm Micah. Good to meet you, Micah. <laughs> Camera guy. <laughs> Good to meet you. How are you? Good to see you, too. Yeah, we got some fun shit going on here. I don't know, hopefully it's a lower, but it might not be. Uh, regardless, we are in a 37 Freeman, and we can fish effectively on three ends. You got the goods? Yeah. I'm starving. <laughs> I want to go watch Tennessee win a national championship. This is the worst right part now? about this whole situation. Six one. These mosquitoes are insane. I'm Austin. Austin? Oh, yeah. Micah. Nice to meet you. 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 This actually, like, it sucks that this, this is happening with the motors, but it might force our hand to go tuna fish. Instead of going like 140 miles, we'll probably go like 110. So, yeah. We'd still be able to make it work. So, tuna fishing might not be the worst thing ever. Because yeah. tuna fishing has been very, very good. So, we're going to go kill a bunch of stuff. Look, the moment the fish hits the deck, all the worries that we just had in the last 12 yeah, hours are going to It'll all be fine. It's going to take longer to get out. I'm we're, not too worried about it. We're still going to get out there. We're still going to smash them. Well, we got four engines. Well, we still, have we have four 45, engines on the boat. Right? We do. Just seventy-five percent of them are working. Yeah, correct. So we're out here. Working the rigs, using these sabikis, little lead, sea works of course. Just working over here trying to pick up some horn bellies, maybe some hardtails. Get tight on a tuna later tonight. Tight, tight. Bait fishing, going pretty slow. So we'll find them. Who knows? Oh, Joe's on his second Mickey. Second Mickey, who's counting that, right? I am. <laughs> I think we probably got about 150 pieces of bait here. All of them are horn bellies. We've only seen one thread fin actually go into live well. And I'm sure we're gonna use these while we get out there. We'll take them and put them in a bucket, toss them behind the boat with a few uh, few ones that have hooks in them. How far out are we running? We got 112 miles to the spot. 112 miles. So we got a little bit of a hike. To the Green Canyon. We are here in the Green Canyon. We're about to put some live baits out. And we're going to see what happens. Right now I'm driving around, looking to mark the fish on the rig. 
and uh, we're gonna throw some live baits out at them if we are lucky enough to mark some here. All right, gotta get ready. I don't like coral. Hold on. Yeah, throw the bait out. Nice, Rubies. I don't know, 70 yards back. Tight, tight. Tight, baby. Alright, you want to take it, Reese? Don't go under your boat a little bit, that's totally fine. Baby. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, Look at that, it's got a double fin right there. Oh yeah, this is my new gun knife for sure. <laughs> this is the real deal right here. How you doing out there, Jeff? Working on it. Love that for you. Well, that's all you got. The elephant. In about 20 seconds. Alright, please up a little bit. We're gonna work on Jeff's fish. Dive knife, aka best gutting knife ever now. This is staying with me. Thank you so much, boys. Sweat, dog. Yeah. What's up with that? You're doing a good job of making it look hard. Yeah, I know that. that. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> Bigger than they look. <laughs> good shot, Steve. <laughs> nice work, Paul. We can go. Woo! Right, boy. All right, the corner of the mountain with the Seawork took, as always. Woo! We're dragging the rock. All right, she's good to go. Get them very cold, very fast. He's full. Put him in a half flush. Push him all the way forward. We make it upset. Woo! Okay. Dude, what did we do tomorrow? Probably a peanut. Real nice, huh? A zipper. Who's up? Right here. You know, Micah. Fight now. There he is, Micah. Oh my god. He's coming in the boat. Went underneath my rod. I'm on two. Shoot a mayhem. No, he's not. Put the rod tip down. In the water. Real, real. There you go, short pop. That's the name of the game. Oh yeah, nice tuna. Wonderful. Good guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Forward you go, my friend. All right. French for tea. Look at the gap guy. Real, real. Oh, oh, real, real, real. This thing's for me. Rock it down. This is real, so green. You see how lit up he was? Woo! Get there, boys. All right. Oh, 
That's a good one, dude. Slowed down quite a bit right after that. Um, twilight bite. Twilight? Is that the right word? I don't know. Dusk bite. Kind of waiting for the moon to come up, which should be shortly. Alright, get a couple of baits on, why don't you? Well, kind of what we said. Pretty much waiting around for the moon to rise. Moon rose. 24 minutes ago, we put like six or seven. Blackfin's about that big in the boat. But um, that's a real one we just hooked on to. Austin has a bigger one on. But yeah, things are looking up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice! Turbo Louisiana Black. The size that makes the people in the Keys drop their jaw to the ground. Yeah, baby. What's on the NLV then? On the purple on purple. Just tied it on. Yep. Give me that gap. Three ounce NLV in right there. Did you see him yet? No, no. Nope. He's gonna be pretty damn close. Yeah, I see color. Hey, there's two more tuners with him. What? Yeah. Stop. They made out. They just went in front of the boat. Oh, yeah. I see him down there. Yeah. There's another tuner with him. Yeah. Oh, my God. 100%. See that? That behind him? That's yeah. a shark. Oh, <laughs> hey Connor. Hey Connor, really, really put your ass into him. Buddy. Oh yeah, real nice fish, Connor. Ooh, nice shot. Mean one, yeah. dog. God damn, yeah, they're mean ones right now. Oh, he's bigger than I thought. Yeah. That's a good one. They got, go, they got fired up right now. <laughs> Really important for these tuna not to point the rod at them. See how I'm trying to fight to keep this rod perpendicular? I'm not giving them any head space. And now I'm gonna tighten up on them a little bit, give them some beans, tighten that circle. It's coming right up, fighting. It's fighting to stay parallel. There he is. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> uh, wow, he about jumped in the boat, right? Nice yellow. They usually don't like it when you pump the drag them on. Nice yellow setup. There you go. Yes, yeah, yeah, baby. Sport shot. That's what we're here for, baby. Woo! Yeah. All right, let's get this guy gutted and nice. Do it again. Friggin' real nice. Sent out the liveliest bait of the night here. Waited about 30 seconds. Now we're hooked up to something nice. It is 3.20 a.m. In case you were wondering. We've been grinding all night. Black fins are absolutely annihilating us. A lot of them are very, very small. We uh, cannot keep them, or we shouldn't keep them. But we are picking at some like mid-grade 10 to 15 pounders. And uh, Connor grinding out the live bait. Either hooked a gigantic black fin or I think it's the yellow. I feel like it's yellow, man. I like that. Yellow? I think it's yellow. Yeah, it is a yellow. Yeah! That a boy! Oh, yeah. nice. Another one in the boat, boy! There we go. All right, we are doubled up. Little well, cameraman right here. We have another yellow fin on. And this is either a gigantic black fin or another yellow fin. Big black, I'll take it. Good turbo. You might have the yellow fin. This fish like you right now, huh? Hot. Hot hand. It happens. We 
We just got back from an epic 24 hour trip, crushing the yellowfin tuna and all the blackfin tuna you want. And the only thing that you can do with these things if you want to do it the right way, is get you a sword knife with a G10 gun grip. All these knives, the exact same thing that gun grips are made out of. You are never ever gonna drop this knife. It has a blade that is actually sharpenable and it stays sharp, I promise you. If you are a charter guide or in the industry, work in a seafood market, or a connoisseur of playing fish like myself, this is the knife you want. These yellowfin tuna are the pride and joy of the fishery in South Louisiana. And I tell you what, nine inch sword knives, absolutely felt these every single time. Even if the knife almost stabs you. There you go. Super hot outside. So being in this shade and having this nice and uh, breezy day in Grand Isle, it's definitely making this fish cleaning a whole lot easier. I've got to get all of the loins out of the fillet right now. They look like this, and they're passing them on to Connor. Oh I'm taking the God. meat Burn. off the skin. Yeah. It's a lot easier to do it if you cut it into sections rather than just lay the whole piece, but you could do it either way. I prefer it this way. Come on, clean up duty. We're taking out the bloodline. This is the dark part. So we want nice clean meat. So just a little trimming. Joe, what are you on? Uh, the most important job. Beer drinking. Beer and bag. She's on and bagging. B and B. I'm somebody who loves to make sushi. So I'll probably make some sushi for the sword crew. Oh my goodness. So this is triple stacked on this cooler. Got this little guy. That one's fully loaded as well. So the whole team back in Santa Rosa Beach, we just had an epic trip with Joe BT. We cleaned up all of our fish. I want to show you guys how I make sushi. More specifically, how do I make the sushi rice? So the rice is the single most important part of the entire dish. For this, we're just going to take it and we're going to do uh, one and a half cup of sushi rice. You're going to bring it over to your sink. And you want to get all the starchiness off of it. So you're going to measure the water that you end up putting in here. And what you want is a two to three ratio. The rice is boiling on the stove right now. And so I've got this rice vinegar. I take like four tablespoons of it. And I put the, ta the tablespoons of rice vinegar in. I get three tablespoons of just like pure cane sugar. Put the cane sugar in. And I'll take my salt, I just give it a good 10, 15 twist of the salt shaker. You're gonna take this and you're gonna put it on the stove and you're gonna mix this in. So you're gonna dilute the salt and the sugar into the vinegar. Once it's done and diluted, you just wanna move it off the flame and let it sit there until our rice is done simmering for 20 minutes. We got Connor over here, he's chopping stuff up for tuna tartare and spicy tuna. I'm gonna prep this fish for uh, searing it. And the one thing I love to do is I put some toasted sesame oil on it. Just a little bit, just enough so that the sesame seeds will start to stick. And you take the sesame seeds and just pour the sesame seeds on. We're gonna put this onto uh, a skillet at very high heat. And we're only gonna sear it for just a little bit of time. So we've got two bowls of chopped tuna here. One of them could become a spicy tuna. And all I really like to do 
So I put some mayo in it, but not that much. The mayo is just made to help spread the cayenne pepper all over. We're gonna put this chili crunch inside of it. And I'd probably put like one spoonful in. All right, and then for the second one, you can really do it however you want to do it. You can just take the oil, toasted sesame oil, maybe about 10 to 15 little shakes in there. Get your soy sauce. I only have a little bit left in here. If I give it a good five second swirl, take some pepper, some regular cracked pepper, and I put the sesame seeds in here. I'll just take it, another avocado, I'll chop it up, and I'll put the avocado in there with it. So we've got our rice that finished cooking right here, but you would take your your uh, little concoction here, the rice vinegar, the sugar, and the salt, pour it into there, and that's what gives the sushi its flavor. And what you'll do, this is a very important step, is either you have someone fan this with a actual uh, paper plate, or if you have a wipe with a fancy hair dryer, you can turn the hair dryer on, and you're just gonna start to cool that rice off. And what happens when you cool it, it allows the individual grains of rice to get very sticky individually rather than them cooking together. If you have a red rice that's like almost like goopy, you don't want the goopiness. Mix this up with a fork, and this will be the perfect addition to the uh, seared tuna right there. What we're doing out here is uh, we're taking our rice and we're really forming it up into a ball in our hand. The best way to do it is get your hand a little wet and then you want to put the rice in and you want to press it. Press it into your fingertip so it comes out as a ball and it doesn't fall apart when you start to pick it up on the plate. So they're doing the rice balls. I'm gonna take the tuna and I'm just making like little pieces and the little pieces are gonna go right on top. So we just finished up our tuna four ways. We got sear right here that Reese did. We got the Nigeria here that the team did. We got spicy tuna with the crunchy chili plate. And we also have tuna tartar. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in. This tuna came from Louisiana, fishing with JBT, and we're gonna enjoy it right here. Mm -hmm. 